Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today we're going to be looking at the Stark Sound Beta 7 Bookshelf Speaker. This is a company I'm not too familiar with but I am very aware that they make subwoofers because every time I do a look inside video on a subwoofer I get a lot of comments from you guys telling me how great your subwoofers are and that I should do a look inside video on one. Well today I'm here to tell you that the Apple does not fall far from the tree. This speaker actually contains some pretty cool technologies that are found in higher end speakers, which I'll tell you all about. So today we're going to tear this speaker down. We're going to go over the TS parameters of the drivers. We're going to look at the cabinet construction. We're going to take a look at the crossover components, and then I'm going to give you my listening impressions. So let's get started with the teardown. The Stark Sound Beta 7 is a two-way bookshelf speaker design that retails for $750. It can be purchased direct from Stark Sound or through one of their dealers. For drivers, you get a 7-inch woofer and a 1.15-inch tweeter. Both drivers contain shorting rings, which is a technology that I'll talk more about later. This technology is rarely seen in speakers that are this affordable, so kudos to them for including it. The speakers I have are finished in oak ebony black and give the speakers a modern appearance. This colorway uses a satin black front baffle with a contrasting black and gray textured wood grain wrap on the rest of the cabinet. The finish is made from vinyl but looks nice and appears to be quite durable. On the back of the speaker is the base reflex port and a pair of gold plated binding posts. As for specifications, the speakers have a frequency response of 35Hz to 23000Hz, sensitivity of 87dB, impedance of 4 ohms, and can handle up to 200 watts. Cabinet dimensions are 8.56 inches in width by 13.75 inches in height by 12.75 inches in depth. As for accessories, Stark Sound includes two grills, a very basic owner's manual, warranty card, and some rubber peel and stick feet for the bottom of the speakers. Now that I got most of the specs out of the way, let's get started with the teardown. All right, my audiophile friends, I'm really excited to tear this speaker down. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Can't wait to see what this 7-inch bass driver looks like, so let's get started with the surgery. The woofer's held in by five 3mm Allen screws, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove them all. The base driver in the Beta 7 is an in-house design and is extremely nice. It's the kind of driver you typically don't find in speakers at this price point. It uses a cast aluminum basket, which is far better at minimizing ringing than stamped steel. The cone is a multi-layer composite design to optimize damping while maximizing rigidity and stiffness. The innermost layer consists of a finely woven 0.5K Japanese fiberglass. The middle layer is a PMI polymer foam from Germany. The top structural layer is an ultra-thin 3K carbon fiber weave, also sourced from Japan, that according to Stark Sound dramatically increases cone rigidity and ensures near-perfect pistonic motion. The outermost layer is a matte finish resin sourced from the United States that further enhances overall cone stiffness. I think one of the coolest technologies that Stark Sound utilizes in their drivers is shorting rings. Shorting rings significantly reduce harmonic and intermodulation distortion providing much better clarity and improved transient response, which enhances sound quality. Even B&W reserves this tech only for their higher end models, which include the 700 and 800 series loudspeakers. Another cool technology being used is Stark Sound's proprietary magnet system called the Hybrid Effective Magnetic Field, or HEMF. Basically, it optimizes the multi-magnet configuration that enhances dynamics reduces distortion, and improves thermal stability. As for the voice coil, it appears to be one and a half inches in size, and Stark Sound is utilizing a couple of design techniques to keep it cool. The first one is by using a vented bobbin, which are the holes at the top of the voice coil former. It can be seen here. The second is by venting the voice coil underneath the spider. To vent the trapped air behind the dust cap, Stark Sound is using a vented cone coupler. In my opinion, this is a pretty sweet bass driver for a speaker that is this affordable. 
Now it's time to see how much the base driver weighs from the Beta 7. And it came in at 3 pounds and 9.7 ounces. For a comparison, the base driver from my ELAC UBR62 weighs 4 pounds and 15.2 ounces. And the base driver from my Bowers & Wilkins 606 S3 weighs 3 pounds and 12.9 ounces. The smoother the impedance curve, the lower the likelihood of a problem in the driver's frequency response. Attached are two free air impedance curves. The first is from the Stark Sound Beta 7 mid bass driver, and the second is from the mid bass driver used in the Bowers & Wilkins 606 S3. Notice the obvious ripples between roughly 90 and 200 Hz, and a larger one around 950 Hz in the B&W driver, while the Stark Sound Beta 7 is remarkably smooth until about 1500 Hz where I think surround resonances start to take place. My interpretation of this data is that the B&W continuum cone is exhibiting early cone breakup, or surround resonance mode starting as low as 90 Hz, whereas the stark driver stiffer cone profile and heavily damped surround successfully push that first significant resonance well above the mid-base region. The stark driver also benefits from a stronger motor, a lower FS, and overall better mechanical damping. Although the B&W driver has lower moving mass, its weaker motor and higher QTS largely offset that advantage. For a speaker that costs $450 less than the B&W 606 S3, the Stark Sound Beta 7 clearly uses a superior mid-bass driver. It's rare that you get more than what you pay for, especially in this hobby. The bass driver tolerances in the Stark Sound Beta 7 are the tightest I've measured in this price range better even than some speakers costing twice as much. FS varies by just 0.15% and Zmax by only 1.7%. That's impressive. Nice job, Stark Sound. So now I'm ready to remove the tweeter from the Beta 7. This tweeter is larger than what you typically find at this price point. I think it's around 1.15 inches in size and that equals about 29 millimeters and it's held in by six 2.5 millimeter Allen screws. So let's get this thing removed and see what it's like. The tweeter in the Beta 7 is 29 millimeters or 1.15 inches in size and uses a silk dome. My guess is they are using a larger 29 millimeter diaphragm to get a lower resonant frequency which allows them to use a lower crossover point of 1850 Hz. The tweeter incorporates copper shorting rings, also known as Faraday rings in its motor assembly, a feature that delivers several important benefits. They dramatically lower both harmonic and intermodulation distortion, stabilize voice coil inductance by keeping LE virtually constant regardless of excursion, and significantly improve electrical phase linearity and group delay behavior. This results in noticeably cleaner, smoother, and more transparent high frequencies, even at elevated listening levels. The enlarged chamber on the back of the tweeter is designed to reduce rear-facing reflections, which will result in lower distortion and a cleaner sound. On the front of the tweeter is the waveguide that includes several dimples. These dimples are designed to improve high-frequency dispersion and reduce edge diffraction, which according to Stark Sound, results in a smoother off-axis response. Also, the speaker terminals are made from non-ferrous materials, which is nice to see. In my opinion, this is a really nice high-frequency driver for a speaker that is so affordable. The tweeter's impedance curve is generally smooth, though a noticeable knee begins around 950 Hz. Most likely, this is due to a mechanical resonance or the onset of dome breakup, a characteristic commonly seen in 1-inch and larger soft dome designs. The resonant frequency of the tweeter measured at 572 Hz, which is very low, and voice coil inductance is exceptionally low, made possible by the inclusion of shorting rings in the motor design. Overall, a pretty nice tweeter. The tolerances between the two tweeters are one of the best I have seen yet. The difference in FS is under 1%, and the difference in Zmax is 0.093%. Nice job, Stark Sound. Now we're going to take a look at the terminal cup and the binding post to see if there's any ferromagnetic parts being used in the signal path. I know this subject's pretty controversial, but there's actually some truth to what Danny at GR Research is saying. 
Um, and the reason for that is IEEE did a white paper on ferromagnetic parts being used in audio connectors, and they found that it introduced passive intermodulation, also known as third order harmonic distortion into the signal. And I'll leave a link to that paper in the description if you wanted to take a look at it. So as you guys could see, the, four, the terminal cup was held in by four uh, screws. Those were T15 torque screws. So I've already removed them. You also get a pair of binding posts. They are gold plated, seem to be of decent quality and they also accept uh, banana plugs. And they are made from non-ferrous materials, which is great. Now let's check the nuts on the back that fasten them to the terminal cup. And those are made from steel. But you can easily change those out with uh, nuts made from brass if, you, if you'd like to do so. The Beta 7 is using a first order filter on the tweeter circuit and a second order filter on the woofer circuit. The crossover point between the woofer and tweeter is 1850 hertz. Notably, the tweeter circuit uses a metalized polypropylene film capacitor. This is a clear step above what is typically found in this price bracket. At this price point, most competing speakers rely on metalized polyester film capacitors, but polypropylene offers significantly lower ESR, lower dissipation factor, and significantly reduced dielectric absorption, all of which contribute to cleaner and more transparent highs. The woofer circuit is also better than average for this price category. It employs a metalized polyester film capacitor paired with an iron core inductor instead of the usual electrolytic capacitors that I typically find here. While polyester film is not quite as refined as polypropylene, it still provides dramatically lower distortion and ESR than electrolytic capacitors. Port tuning on the Beta 7 measures around 40 Hz. There's one cabinet resonance around 600 Hz circled in red. The resonance circled in yellow at 1.5 kHz comes from the mid-base driver itself. It matches perfectly with the peak that I measured in the driver's free air impedance sweep. Build quality of the cabinet is pretty nice for this price. The front baffle is quite thick and measured at 1 and 3 8 inches thick. The sidewalls are 11 16 of an inch thick and the rear panel is 3 8 of an inch thick. A single large internal brace effectively ties the front baffle, sides, and rear together, significantly reducing panel resonances. As noted in the port tuning section, the only measurable cabinet resonance occurs at 600 Hz and is low enough in amplitude that I think it will not be audible. The inside of the cabinet is filled with plenty of damping material and the base reflex port is flared at both ends to minimize air turbulence and chuffing. During my extended listening sessions at high volumes, I heard no port noise whatsoever. Aesthetically, the front baffle features a smooth satin black paint finish, while the rest of the cabinet is wrapped in a textured black and gray vinyl that looks and feels durable. Overall, the cabinet is solidly engineered, attractively finished, and an excellent value in this price range. I was genuinely impressed by the stark sound Beta 7 right from the first track. I started with my go-to 70s, 80s, and 90s playlist, and the soundstage was large and effortlessly wide. What really shocked me though was the bass output from a bookshelf speaker of this size. It's deep, powerful, and remarkably clean, with real authority and slam that you simply don't expect at this scale. In direct back-to-back -back comparison, the Beta 7 clearly outperformed the BMW 606S3, ELAC Unify Reference UBR62, and KEF Q350 in low-end extension, weight, and control. The mid-range is another highlight. It's warm and full-bodied, with every note carrying natural richness and weight. Vocals and acoustic instruments sound especially inviting. Treble is detailed, open, and airy, yet never aggressive or forward. It strikes a beautiful balance that the brighter BMW 606S3 doesn't quite match in long-term listenability. For years, my favorite bookshelf speaker for under $800 has been the ELAC Debut Reference DBR62, and it's still excellent but the Beta 7 has taken the crown for me. The drivers are a noticeable step up in refinement, and the overall tonal warmth is downright addictive. At $750 a pair, the Stark Sound Beta 7 genuinely competes with speakers that cost considerably more, which is a rarity in this hobby. If you are a channel member, I strongly recommend checking out the members-only sound demos. 
especially the head-to-head -head against the $1,300 ELAC UBR62. I suspect a lot of you will be as surprised as I was. At $750 a pair, it's hard to imagine audiophile satisfaction getting much sweeter without spending a whole lot more. I'd recommend the Stark Sound Beta 7 to friends and family without hesitation. That wraps up my in-depth look of the Beta 7. Thanks for watching and happy listening.